Welcome to the Connect Developer State of the Union. This session is designed to give you, uh, developers, a view into our current state of our platform, um, cover major updates and upcoming features that are relevant to you, uh, as well as to builders uh, working in Meta Horizon worlds. Now, I'm going to talk about the state of our VR ecosystem, after which Yardley Poll will discuss new features, um, technologies, and improvements we've made for developers in the last year. And finally, Anand Das will cover our efforts to push VR forward as a platform for work, uh, creator tools, fitness, and learning. Later today, there are many more sessions on specific topics devoted to all aspects of developing for the metaverse. So please stay tuned. Now, usually when Connect comes around, uh, you know, I get up here and I, I talk about how the Meta Quest platform is developing into a viable ecosystem for developers. And um, I show some graphs uh, and I talk about how well the market is doing. Uh, and I talk about some trends. And, you know, I'm going to do that today also. I think that's important. Like, developers need this information to operate their business. But this year, I, I kind of wanted to do something a little bit different. I want to take a step back and just, just look at how far we've come. You know, I, I took over the management of third-party VR content at Meta in 2018. And when I did that, I had one goal, to produce an ecosystem that produces great software for our customers. I ran an independent game studio for, for several years, and you know, what I learned is that there are some platforms that you know, go to really great lengths to ensure that their success of their developers. Um, and then there are other platforms that, that don't do that. Our team's goal was to build a software ecosystem on MetaQuest that makes you know, the business decision to build software for VR just one that was very obvious. I wanted to build a platform that you know, my former studio would have wanted to ship to. And I think that you know, developers don't have a reason to support any platform uh, unless it's profitable for them. And so our team, you know, we focused on user trust and revenue generation as our North Star goals. Well, fast forward to earlier this year, we made a, an announcement of a major milestone, which is that sales of VR titles in the Quest Store have surpassed a billion dollars. That's a lot of money. Um, and when I talk to developers, particularly developers who aren't currently building for VR, they're universally surprised that we've grown our platform so significantly. Actually, I think that Quest has grown so fast since 2019 that there's many folks out there who haven't realized that VR is no longer an enthusiast niche product. And the best news is, you know, our growth is accelerating. We've now surpassed $1.5 billion. And, and these numbers are material to companies of any scale, and they translate directly to developer profit. In our uh, quest to create a viable VR ecosystem, we've ended up building one of the largest publishing programs for independent games in the entire world. And we've done it by you know, working very closely with developers and sometimes funding the titles that they're building. We've helped fund hundreds of games and apps that are in active development today, like hundreds of games. That's an incredible pipeline of titles, you know, particularly for a platform that's as young as ours. And we know that you know, there are thousands of developers out there that we don't have a direct engagement with that are building for Quest and the Quest platform. I mean, just looking back over the last 12 months, we've been able to launch some fantastic titles uh, like Resident Evil 4, Blade and Sorcery, Red Matter 2, Moss Book 2, The Tale of Onigoro, After the Fall, Medal of Honor Above and Beyond, Zenith, The Last City, Green Hell, Demio, and there are a ton more coming soon 
including Ghostbusters, uh, The Walking Dead, Saints and Sinners, Chapter 2, as well as Behemoth, just to name a few. And look, it's not, it's not just video games either. Fitness apps like Lemil Body Combat and productivity apps like Archeo have also found a home on our platform. What I'm trying to say here is that the Quest platform is growing really rapidly, and it's already returning material revenue to VR developers. Um, and that's translating directly into higher quality software for our audience. You know, the, the, the platform we have today is exactly the type of platform I wish I could have shipped to when I ran my own studio. But, you know, to quote the great LeVar Burton, you don't have to take my word for it. Let's take a look at the numbers. Of over 400 apps on the Quest Store, roughly one in three are making revenue in the millions today. 33 titles have made over 10 million in gross revenue, which is up 11 uh, since February. And the number of apps that have made over $5 million in gross revenue has doubled since last year, uh, up to 55. Walking Dead's a great example. Walking Dead has surpassed $50 million in revenue on Quest alone. And that's nearly double the revenue on all of the other platforms it ships on. And it's not just that you know, developers are finding success on our platform. They're actually finding it really quickly. Um, I can give you some examples. Resident Evil 4 and Zenith The Last City. Uh, you know, the first is a, is a classic. It's one of the best games ever made. Uh, it's one of my personal favorites. It was completely rebuilt from VR. And the other is like a brand new title from a small independent team. Both of these titles made their first million dollars in revenue on the Quest Store in less than 24 hours. Actually, um, Resident Evil was able to double that number by the end of their first day of sales. But like Blade and Sorcery uh, hit a million dollar milestone in two days since it's, from its launch. And then we have some devs that have done it in as little as three days as well. But as our ecosystem for professional developer studios has expanded, so has the community of small independent developers. The broader community of developers is absolutely critical to push innovation and experimentation forward on our platform. Like we're seeing incredible innovation from developers who are shipping on App Lab, both in, in content and in business model. There are over 2,000 apps shipped on App Lab so far, and we consider this a huge success. And we've continued to invest in improving the experience for developers who are shipping to App Lab. So I'm happy to say that the average turnaround time from submission to response uh, is now less than three days. Now, I know that there are some of you out there who are, who are wondering, you know, I, I, okay, I hear you about this game stuff, but, you know, what does that have to do with the metaverse? And I think the answer to that question is, you know, that as we've seen over the last several years, it's games and game developers that are pioneering the principles and core technologies that ground the metaverse. You know, the goal of a, of a truly social, persistent, co-present experience, I mean, that's going to be achieved by games first. And so this innovative work is absolutely critical to our long-term mission. We're also constantly delivering new technology to our headsets, whether that's uh, pass-through MR, hand tracking, uh, or as you heard about this morning, face and eye tracking. The developers that write the rulebook for these new features are going to be, again, the small independent developers that can move really quickly and feel out the grammar of new technology. And, you know, they often will discover things that we've never even considered. Just take a look at how the developer of Cubism has been using our presence platform, or how Magic Keys is making it easier to learn the piano with MR. I mean, these are really cool on Quest 2, even in black and white, but they're going to absolutely shine with color pass-through on MetaQuest Pro. It's developers like these that are, are teaching us um, and you and the rest of the world you know, what this technology can do. Of course, we are continuing to develop Meta Horizon Worlds um, and continuing to invest in growing the amazing community of technical builders and that are designing immersive worlds. And we're seeing incredible innovation from this group. It's a very early builder community. But as we said you know, many times, um, we're at the beginning of a journey. And the technology that we're discussing today, both
both with the announcement of the MetaQuest Pro and through all of the sessions that we're going to show today, it's foundational to the future of the metaverse um, and for you who are joining us in its creation. The MetaQuest platform, you know, well, we feel great about how strong it's become. And we are continuing to invest in making it even better. Now, to detail some of the new features of the MetaQuest Pro, as well as great new tech we're building for you, please let me introduce Yardley Pohl. Thanks, Chris. In today's keynote, you heard Mark and Angela talk about our latest VR device, MetaQuest Pro. This is a start of our Pro line and a major step towards VR expanding from a gaming device towards a general computer. Developers can build new types of apps and experiences that take advantage of MetaQuest Pro's unique capabilities, such as color pass-through, sensors to support more natural avatar expressions, and more extensive multitasking capabilities. We'll have a number of sessions covering MetaQuest Pro today, starting with our MetaQuest Pro and Presence Platform Overview session. Apart from MetaQuest Pro, we announced two new ways for users to interact with your apps. First is the MetaQuest Touch Pro controllers. These premium controllers are self-tracked, meaning you can support a variety of new movements in your app, regardless of where the headset wearer is looking. They also support brand new True Touch haptics, unlocking new ways to provide user feedback. Now, if your user doesn't have a controller in their hands, you can take advantage of the hand tracking API. This improved API brings step change improvements in tracking continuity, gesture support, movement, and performance. A year ago, we announced a presence platform, which is a collection of machine perception capabilities that will help power the metaverse. And since then, we've seen hundreds of developers building experiences leveraging our platform. This year, Presence Platform has added more capabilities for mixed reality, enhanced interaction with hands and voice, and is adding a new pillar for social presence with the launch of Movement SDK. We're also bringing Presence Platform capabilities like pass-through, mixed reality, scene understanding, and anchors to web developers through WebXR. We're committed to bringing the capabilities that make it easier for you to develop and ship more immersive experiences at scale. As VR moves towards general computing, it's important to support a variety of use cases. Today, we're excited to share that Microsoft is bringing VR versions of Teams and Windows 365 to the MetaQuest store for productivity users. Quest also supports progressive web apps with rich 2D multitasking capabilities, so you can easily access the top productivity, communication, and entertainment apps in your life while in VR. New for MetaQuest Pro, you'll be able to open up 2D apps in an overlay without leaving the VR destination you're in, thanks to an expanded 12 gigabytes of RAM. This makes bringing your 2D apps to VR even more valuable. Over the last year, developers have added a number of progressive web apps, or PWAs, to the MetaQuest store, and even more are on their way, like Dropbox, LastPass, Coursera, and Peacock. Building PWAs for Quest is now even easier than before, thanks to our partnership with Microsoft to add Quest support to their popular PWA Builder developer tool. We're excited to see what you do with the new capabilities and what you can build with them. Now, I want to share some updates from the overall MetaQuest platform. Our teams are listening to your feedback to help drive our roadmap and priorities. So please keep it coming. We're creating new ways to help you, one, Build apps faster, two, realize your app's potential, and three, 
Find new ways to make money and grow your business on the MetaQuest platform. We'll start with building faster. We know there's a lot to do to build a great app, and we want to help you maximize your time making your app amazing versus just making it work. First, MetaQuest Developer Hub. The product formerly known as the Oculus Developer Hub is getting several new features that will make switching between your engine and your headset much easier. We're launching input forwarding to minimize the time you have to put on your headset to test a change. You'll be able to control your request with a mouse and a keyboard and see the results on your PC via casting. We're also releasing scriptable testing to help automate parts of your workflow. For example, with scripts, you can factory reset your device and sign in with a new test user and disable system features that could impact your tests all without human intervention. Next, for Unity developers, we're making improvements to your Unity plugin. We'll be offering distribution via Package Manager to simplify and streamline the installation and update process. Finally, we'll be launching our Meta XR Simulator in early 2023, which simulates our XR devices and features on an API level, allowing for fast iteration when developing Quest apps. Learn more about how you can build faster in a later session called VR Development at the Speed of Light. Next, let's talk about new ways to realize your app's potential. We want to help build a performant and fun experience that's well attuned to your audience. Last year, we launched the Meta Avatars SDK for Unity to simplify development for you. And since then, the number of apps with Meta Avatars has tripled. And now, with the release of MetaQuest Pro, you can use the Meta Avatars SDK to leverage the full eye and face tracking capabilities of the hardware. By bringing personality to VR with avatars that make, make users natural facial expressions, we think that more people will feel more present than ever in your apps. We have many sessions dedicated to Meta Avatars SDK, so if you want to hear directly from any of those devs who are successfully integrating the SDK, check out those sessions. Now, we know that you want to squeeze every drop of compute out of our hardware. So we've improved our performance tools, like adding support for simple perf and Vulkan shader stats to render doc. Now you can really level up the immersiveness of your games by optimizing graphics, compute, and memory. Apps like Red Matter 2 have already used these capabilities to deliver stunning graphics on a standalone headset. Everyone loves playing games in VR with family and friends, and so we're improving multiplayer services to help you engage with your communities. Destinations are a great way to highlight fresh, relevant experiences on the platform, so we're adding them in more services such as Explore. And look out for the new app-to-app -app travel API at the end of this year so that users can travel from one store app to another allowing you to cross-promote between apps. Lastly, we're shipping a new multiplayer demo and update to shared spaces. Find out more in the session bringing people together later today. Now, I know you've all been waiting for this part. Once you've built a great app that delights your users, we want to make sure you have the means to effectively market it and help grow your business. We want you to succeed. We've unlocked a variety of new self-serve promotional and sales tools to help you to do just that. Here are the four tools. First is A-B testing, which recently launched and has already helped developers drive double-digit improvements to the conversion rate on their app store page. You can test new trailers, key art, and descriptions. We're also adding new testable options like keywords, screenshots, and immersive assets. These only take a few minutes to set up. You'll also now have an option to automatically test new changes to your product details page. Next is Try Before You Buy, 
a new way for you to offer a free time-bound trial to users before they pay. We're testing this feature right now and seeing really promising signs. We'll continue to iterate on the product, such as allowing you to choose how long the trial lasts and A-B testing it with your audience. Third, we've heard you ask for more flexibility around when and how you offer sales and bundles, and will soon be making them self-service. You'll be able to propose sales for your apps via the developer dashboard. Finally, Immersive promotions are new assets, allowing you to add depth to your store landing page promos and on your app's product details page. You can use these assets to highlight your app's aesthetics as it appears in headset and ultimately drive more purchases for your app. We're also launching more ways to monetize your IP. Meta Avatar Store that launched on Facebook, Instagram, and Messenger in June will be coming to VR later this year. The store will be available to people on Quest Home and in third-party applications that have integrated with meta avatars and an entry point to our avatar editor. Over time, we plan to release creator tools so that you can design custom avatar items and sell them. Lastly, you told us that reviews on the store are really important to how you show up to your customers and that they reflect the latest and greatest updates from your app. So this fall, we'll be making improvements to reviews and updates, ensuring that recent reviews are more prominent. You can learn more about these areas in our session on marketing your MetaQuest app. We appreciate your feedback and ongoing partnership to help us deliver products that are most vital for you and your business. And now to discuss new opportunities for app developers on MetaQuest, please welcome Anand Das. Hey, thanks, Yardley. Chris began by talking about building a software ecosystem on MetaQuest that makes the developer's business decision to support VR an obvious one. And thanks to the incredible game developers and the technology platform that Yardley presented, we're well on this journey. But now, it's time to expand that journey. Over time, we believe it's inevitable that other categories of experiences will emerge on Quest. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Working alongside developers, we've invested in building an ecosystem around all the new technologies that Quest brings over time. With new presence platform capabilities like mixed reality and social presence, new kinds of apps will be created and businesses will be born that could exist only because of the superpowers of virtual reality and mixed reality. Experiences that go beyond gaming and entertainment, starting to transform VR into a tool for productivity, collaboration, and getting things done. So today, I wanna to talk about some of these new categories and experiences and spotlight some incredible developers who are blazing the trail for all of us and inspiring us along the way. While it's still early days, here are four categories that we find are really resonating with customers. One, work and productivity tools. Two, creator tools. Three, fitness, wellness, and sports. And finally, learning and exploration. Just as more people are working from different locations, developers are recreating the very foundations of how we work and collaborate together. For example, Developers such as vSpatial, Engage, Immersed, and Arthur are helping people work without the limitations of their physical environment, eliminating computer screens, workstations, and even rooms altogether. For example, Immersed allows you to add up to five virtual screens and easily move from one to the other to work or program in focus mode. Immersed has taken this a step further with their addition of pass-through. Want to create a circular portal to easily find your mouse? Now you can. You can see your real desk, your keyboard, and customize pass-through to your liking. With Immersed on MetaQuest Pro, you can stay in the headset longer for more productive work sessions. 3D design and modeling is creating yet another category in changing how we work. 
Developers are creating applications to serve designers, architects, prototypers, game developers, researchers, and more. Historically, designing 3D products or buildings or objects had to be done on 2D screens. What we're seeing now is developers augmenting specific areas of this workflow that can be done even better in a headset. Archeo, ShapesXR, Gravity Sketch, Nanome, and Resolve are great examples of experiences that enable builders to get a sense of size and shape with a virtual design against a physical space and review things collaboratively with their teams. So imagine you're an architect or a designer. Archeo augments your workflow by overlaying your design onto the real world so that clients can more easily understand your vision. Want to see a window where there isn't one or a fully furnished room? You can do that. Archeo uses scene understanding in pass-through to help you understand space and place in whole new ways. The architect can then hop into the room with a client for a live review to finalize the design. With ShapesXR, a designer can prototype their ideas in mixed reality, make notes and sketches on a real surface, and then share that with others. Oh, and thanks to Spatial Anchors, it will stay exactly where they placed it. Or take Nanome, for example, where researchers can model and analyze molecular structures for general chemistry or for pharmaceutical drug discovery with other scientists collaboratively. We know that businesses of all sizes are looking to build their virtual office experiences. And over the past year, we've heard from many of you looking for easier access and distribution of both our headsets and your applications to business customers. To lay the foundation for this, next year, we will evolve our distribution model so that any headset bought anywhere will have access to device management and business-grade features. That means any MetaQuest 2 or MetaQuest Pro headset can add business services, opening up accessibility and control that businesses of all sizes need in building their virtual experiences. These services will begin rolling out via Quest for Business in open beta starting later this year. Now let's turn to creator tools. This is one of my personal favorites. If you're a hobbyist, a gamer, or a student, developers are making tools to make art, music, immersive media creation better, faster, easier, and way more fun. Here are some incredible examples. With TribeXR, you can learn to DJ on realistic decks and then jam with others and broadcast your set to Twitch or YouTube, like leading producer and DJ Dylan Francis did on Instagram. Check it out. Turn your room into an art studio with painting VR. Paint with others on your virtual easel and then show your art in real world rooms and invite others to admire or critique your work. Are you a physics nerd? Well, with Figment, you can import assets into a virtual sandbox with GIFs from Reddit or Giphy, then remix all of that by adding physics to it like that virtual tennis ball that bounces off of your real wall. Then you can create a virtual scene in your real space and publish your collection for others to use and enjoy. We think apps like these are the future of immersive experiences, blending physical and virtual reality. Our third category is fitness, sports, and wellness. In the opening keynote, we talked about the superpowers of Quest, infectiously fun, social, and immersive, that makes exercise feel more like a pleasure than an obligation. And frankly, that's a game changer for me. Developers like FitXR and Les Mills Body Combat are doing incredible work here. And I can't wait for gym class to launch on Quest later this year. So let's look at fitness in greater detail. Developers are building sports and skill-based training apps for football, basketball, baseball, soccer, and other sports that also offer community building experiences. These users represent serious players who spend significant time and resources training and may have the appetite to purchase training tools in VR that are economical or otherwise just geographically inaccessible. A great example of this is Win Reality, which launched in June. 
Players use the app to practice a variety of drills, including batting practice, situational hitting, occlusion, and pitch recognition training, all helping them become better athletes. And within professional sports, developers are incorporating an impressive array of interactive features that allow fans to experience sports in whole new ways. Take developer YBVR and their Stadium app. Stadium allows fans to experience live and on-demand sports as if they were right there in the arena, with live camera switching, 8K streaming, and private viewing rooms for watching alone or with friends. Stadium launches on Quest later this year. Now, we know that physical health is only one aspect of well-being. We know that mental health and wellness is essential to living a full life. On wellness, we're seeing alternate mechanics and modes emerge, whether that's staying seated, standing on a floor, that promotes balance, stretching, and mindfulness. Now, you may not consider your workspace to be an ideal place to practice mindfulness, but take Trip, for example. Their mixed reality experience enables users to wind down after work by converting their workspace or living room into a serenity garden one that evolves and changes with user practice. So now more people can reap the benefits of mindfulness, resilience, and stress reduction. Finally, our fourth category is learning and exploration. This represents a significant opportunity for developers. To help build it, Meta Immersive Learning is investing in an ecosystem. By training the next generation of metaverse creators, Together with partners such as Coursera and edX, we will continue to help build the highest quality immersive content possible. We are also increasing access to learning through immersive tech and headset donations with other industry-leading partners like Unity. Learning also happens when you explore and wander. Now you can do that too. Take Brink as an example, which is multiplayer and supports meta avatars. Brink is an exploration travel app that takes users to, of any age on a journey to a wide variety of photoreal locations across the globe, allowing them to interact with their surroundings and learn about the areas that they explore. Brink highlights native and indigenous cultures in each location by showcasing historical artifacts as well as educational hotspots focusing on topography, folklore, and preservation. Look, making something that people love is hard, really hard. You have to look past the hype and get to the heart of why it deserves to exist, for whom, and what form should it take. But you believe, and you are building those experiences that pave the way for all of us to make the metaverse real. The opportunity is proven, and the community is real, built and sustained by you. So thank you for continuing to delight and surprise us with your creativity and for taking us on this journey with you. I hope you can tell that you are key to the success of the metaverse. The, the products and technology we're building, uh, the ecosystem that we've nurtured, these are all in service to making you successful. Because ultimately, I mean, that's what it's going to take to make the metaverse a reality.